Very good morning to you and thanks for joining us on the run-up today. My name is Nyamgul Agadji. I'm alone in the studio today, but I know that I have a whole family out there and you are one of them. Thank you for joining us. Today we are going to be looking at the 2023 general elections and the fate of the PDP in Benue State and beyond. This is in the light of the Benue State Governor Samuel Otom saying that he has withdrawn his support for the presidential candidate of the PDP. You'll agree that Benue is a PDP state and this statement leaves us wondering about the fate of the PDP even beyond Benue. Recall that in the South-South, Governor Nyesom Wike of River State has been at loggerheads with, the, with Atiku, that's the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP. In the Southeast, Ifan Yogwanyi of Enugu and Okezie Ikpazu Abia State. Samuel Otom of Benue and Shei Makende of Oyo from the North Central and Southwest, respectively. That is five PDP stronghold states. It must be scary times for the main opposition party, PDP. Well, today we will be joined by Teve Akase, Special Advisor to the Benue State Governor on Media and Publicity. Also, we will be having a financial expert, Dr. Chiwike Uba, talk about the proposed re redesigning of the Naira and what should be a priority, especially at a time when the Naira keeps crashing against the dollar. Remember that the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Emefiele, has said that some denominations of the Naira will be changed by next year's end. And we will have to start using the new notes from January. And in fact, from uh, December, early December. It will be the second time this is going to be done in Buhari's time. First as a head of the military junta, now as a civilian president. Coincidence or not? And finally, we're going to be having a young entrepreneur tell us about his business and share his thoughts on the current political situation in the country. Do stay with us. We'll be back shortly. Okay, welcome back. Um, we're being joined by the Benue State Special Advisor on Media and Publicity, Mr. Teve Akase. Good morning and welcome to the program, Mr. Akase. Good morning and thank you for having me. First of all, we'd like to express our condolences to the people of Benway State for the lives that you may have lost to insurgency and what you're struggling with uh, in the floods and every other thing that is ravaging Benway State. Accept our sympathies, sir. Much, uh, we do appreciate. Okay, um, you... From the Chief Press Secretary, you resigned and became uh, an aspirant of the PDP in the last uh, primary election. And we'd like to congratulate you on the bold step, even though you lost to the Speaker of the State House of Assembly. How would you describe that process that threw up the, spe uh, the Speaker of the House of Assembly, who is now the candidate of the PDP in the governorship race in Benway? Well, thank you again. That separates PDP from other political parties uh, because PDP uh, in Benue State is a, a family. And uh, before the consensus arrangement was made, before the primaries, we governorship aspirants had a forum, which still exists even after the primaries. And we agreed amongst ourselves that whoever emerged, emerged or whoever emerges as the uh, candidate will have the support of all of us. And so it was, it was a natural fight um, that uh, that is urban speaker should fly the flag of the party in the governorship election. We, I, I was the first to come out and accept uh, because as, um, uh, as a young politician, uh, you know, many times the, the decisions may not go your way, but it's, it's a learning process. Uh, and and to, to support the party, even if the decision does not come my way, uh, will now give me that um, that balance to, to to prove that I am a true party man and I have the spirit of sportsmanship. It mustn't be me. It could have been any, anyone else. And if I was chosen, 
I would have expected my fellow aspirants to to accept it, to embrace the decision and support me so that we go to to to, to the polls together. Uh, going to, to the general election where you have a divided house, I mean, it, it would be really difficult. So I would have expected my my aspir my fellow fellow aspirants to uh, to accept the decision, even even if it wasn't um, what they, they were expecting to support me so that I will go to, to uh, and get the victory for PDP. So, uh, for me, it, 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 it was fine. Uh, right on Abutai Zuba uh, is, a, is a fine gentleman, he, and he has demonstrated that even after he got the, uh, the nomination of the party, he went around quickly and met all of us, went to our houses, all the governorship aspirants, and assured us that, look, this ticket, this nomination ticket is for all of us. It is not only for him, Taito Zuba, and so we should be together, remain together, and uh, work for the victory of PDP. So that, that's how uh, it has been. Okay. Um, Benue State is largely a PDP state, but Governor Tom has declared against the presidential candidate of the PDP. He said he will not work for the PDP candidate again. First of all, we'd like you to confirm that and then tell us how that will even work because you have just said that going into an election with a divided house means that uh, you may not have victory. Uh, when I was saying that, I was referring to Benue State. I was not referring to PDP across Nigeria in the entire country. Um, and let me clear this, that Governor Tom is not uh, speaking for himself as Governor of Benue State. He is the standard bearer. He is the symbol. Uh, is the one who uh, he, he, he holds this, uh, this mandate in trust for the people. And he was elected on the platform of the party. So if the party has got something wrong and the governor has his opinion, his view, and says, look, this is wrong, we shouldn't isolate what Governor Tom is saying to mean that this are, these are his comments as an individual. No, he is a leader and he represents the party, he represents the people. So, um, and again, the governor, I, I didn't hear him say he was going to work against the PDP. What he said is that the right thing has to be done. And he has been saying the same thing, that those who should act quickly and rightly have refused to do so. They have, they have so, so far, what we have seen is arrogance. And if this continues, then the chances of the PDP at the federal level in 2023, may be slim. This is because you have to move to battle, battle in courts. This is politics. It's a game. You have to go to, to the, the polls as a united front. And those who, who should act to carry every, everyone along are not doing so. Look at the example that the governor gave, that in Benue State, he is the governor of the state. But he was not consulted. He was not. No, no one asked him any question about who and who should make the list of the PDP presidential campaign council. Is that how it should be? The governor of the state is the leader of the party at the state level. So for goodness' sake, he deserves that honor. It is not about Samuel Otom. It is about the office that he occupies. Even if you don't like him as a person, what about the office? And if those who are saying that they will not reckon with Governor Tom, if they were gov the governor, if they were in his place, would they be, and they were treated the way they are treating him, would they be happy? This is something that we should all be, look at it from the, the point of view of if, if, if I were in that place, I would have, ta have taken it. Now, uh, the, the candidate, the presidential candidate of the party, uh, former Vice President Elijah Atiku Abubakar, spoke in Kaduna and said the governor has been profiled, Governor Otom has been profiling Fulani people. And the governor uh, called, I mean, spoke to him, sent him a message, and he apologized. The governor apologized, but because you, your comments now put me, set me off for hatred, and I now look like I am, I, I don't like Fulani people. And I have Fulanese in my government. 
I have never shown any hatred towards Fulanis. The people that I have problems with are those who come from without Nigeria, who come from other countries like Mali, Niger, Chad, and attack our people. So if you apologize to me privately here, people will not know that what you said was wrong, sir. So I expect that, Your Excellency, take this message. You can even ask one of your aides to, to say publicly that what you said was wrongly misinterpreted, that you didn't mean to uh, to malign God or to, to set him up for hatred and to look like someone who doesn't like to see the face of a full animal. So that is one. Another thing is that when uh, 50 persons were, were we, we say 50 because these people have been, corpses have been recovered in Beijing, in the Kumloka government, after the attack on, uh, on, on that local government by, by, by Fulani Hillsman. And 36 have been recovered, the rest are missing. Many more are in the hospitals. So when Elijah Tiku Abubakar sent condolence message, in, in the middle message, he said something that was not just curious but scary. He said, Un unless I'm not quoting him verbatim, but this is the interpretation. That unless our people are in integrated in the societies where they live, their children are not allowed to go to schools and access hospitals, that is the only time they can reciprocate that gesture. And we, we looked at that story and I would say, are you kidding me? Someone who is aspiring to be the president of this country is addressing a particular group of people as well. That is unacceptable. I think Mokubaka should be a state man. He says he's a Kanajiba. So this is the time to show the families that were killed in Beijing in the Kumloka government area of Benin State. Do they, if they were alive, would they not have, would Atiku not have expected that they would vote for him? Or if they had voted for him, would they have asked Ahmed to remove those votes that he doesn't want their votes? Is that the message is sending? What happened to people who are in the IDP camps? He has never any of the IDP camps in Benway. When he came here, Governor Tom asked him, reminded him that sir, there are thousands of our people in the camps. It would be nice to go there and, and just sympathize with them, you know. Empathize with them. Let them feel that you are the Zege Mulo team, and by extension, the Zege Mulo Benue. Zege Mulo means the shade, shade of the of the people of Chief Land, and by extension, the shade of Benue State. So you have to demonstrate that you are truly the cover of the people. If they have trouble, they can run under your shield and and be protected. You have to show that now, so that. When the people are voting for you come next year's elections, they will know they are voting for one of their own. They are voting for someone who, who loves them, who cares about them. But the, the signs that we are seeing now, the signs that we are seeing that he could demonstrate now are, are, are scary. They are scary signs because even before he becomes president, it, it, it is, it's a that he has demonstrated that some other Nigerians are not his own people, that he cares more about a particular sector, a particular group of people. This is the, this is the contention. And the governor is not speaking for himself as Governor Samuel Otom. He is speaking the minds of majority of Benue people. Because in the end, let it be on record that he spoke and said that something is wrong and that has to be corrected but i think we still have some time it is not too late if he apologizes to people now comes to the state this is the place where the the, the attack took place uh, apologize goes to the idp camps uh, and sympathizes with the people he should show that he is a nigerian he should show that he wants to leave this country as a as a whole as an entity that is, that is the argument we are making. That is, okay. that is the only uh, contention. Okay. Mr. Chaf, uh, Akase, um, yes. Atiku has not really shown some kind of humility from the, will I call it body language, since it's a, a term we love in Nigeria nowadays. Uh, he went, the same thing you're complaining about in Benway State, coming to constitute a, a campaign council 
a, a mini campaign council as it is without consulting the governor. It's the same thing that happened in uh, River State. Uh, governor Nyesha Mwike was also complaining about the same thing. So if he's exhibiting these, maybe it will be really difficult for him to go back on his words and now start to say, okay, these people should go away and governors give me people. So if he doesn't do this, in a nutshell, you're saying he has lost Benway. Is that it? You see, that is not for me or even the governor to decide. As I've said, Governor Tom represents the people who gave him their mandate on two occasions. But he is saying that something is wrong. Now, it can be corrected if truly those who should correct it want to correct it. It is up to them. Elijah still has some time. If he wants truly, if he wants to be taken who can stay with the presidency of this country. The presidency of this country is it is it's so so important to be toyed with. Okay, let's we can't trust our, our mandate in the hands of somebody. So the, the point I'm making is the the signs that the signals that are coming from him are not acceptable to yeah. our people in Benue okay. State. I, I we may I not hold you. their hands to go and vote, but the, 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 the people are already complaining. You you saw you saw a one of the major blocks in Benue State two days ago. They mean that Elders Forum is one of the most one of the major blocks in terms of politics of this land. They came out publicly and said that they were pulling out of they were withdrawing their support. Withdrawing their support to do I mean, They withdrew their support from a chief of the It wasn't the governor that said it. The people spoke and they were at quickly to correct the more groups to come up like that. The governor has spoken to him as the candidate of his party that look, this is what the people are saying. That the signals that are coming from you are not good, sir. So it will be difficult for me as Governor Tom to campaign for you in Benue State. What will I go to tell the people? What will I tell them? How can I convince them that they should trust you when you are sending them uh, uh, con I mean, contradictory signals, opposing signals, I mean, signals that are, are sending uh, 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 dangerous uh, uh, signs that okay. if you become president, you will be the president of the Fulani sect, the Fulani race. Okay, we, we've seen we've seen um, some of these traits in uh, the principal or or the candidate of your party, uh, Atiku Abubakar. We we didn't see him apologize after pulling down the tweet about Deborah that was killed. That someone tweeted on his behalf and said that it was condemnable and all that, and he pulled it down. And Nigerians cried out. We have not seen an apology. If it has been done i haven't seen it uh, an apology like that so it, it might be difficult for him to apologize and do the things that you see as being right if this happens or if this doesn't happen rather is there a plan b are you having a coalition with another party to support their candidate in the state should Atiku fail to do the needful well you see um the a leader who wants to be the wrong, like the issue of the body cited. A leader is known when he takes responsibility and says, Look, my people, I didn't know that this would go against your expectations, and you'd be disappointed. And now that you don't like what I did what I said. I am so that is who a leader is. We have seen world leaders, leaders of a bigger nation, apologize to their people. So this one is not for me to say. I am not Benue people. I am just one person with a single vote. Governor Samuel Oto, my principal, is not Benue people, even though he represents them, but he has one vote. Even if he decides to vote for Atiku, and the majority of Bene people say they don't want Atiku, there is nothing Governor Tom can do. He can't flog them to kill behind Atiku. So it is up to Atiku and his 
camp to hope to earn the votes of Benue people. Governor Tom has told him what his people are saying, that the signals from his camp are not good enough. They are telling them that they will be alienated, they will be, uh, they, they, they will be, I mean, uh, they, they will be, uh, uh, they, they won't be considered as part of this entity called Nigeria if Atiku becomes president. So they are worried, they are disturbed, and it is up to Atiku to correct that. So it is not for me here now to, to say we are in PDP, we are working for the emergence of PDP candidates at the state level, our governorship candidate, right on the Zuba, our senators, senatorial candidates, Governor Samuel Oton for Zone B, Senator Gabriel Suswam for Zone A, Senator Abba Moro for Zone B, and all other candidates at the House of Reps, for the House of Reps, House of the State Assembly, we are working for them. Now it is up to Atiku's camp to convince Benue people, even if it doesn't convince us as his own people in, in, the, uh, in the same part, the governor has already told him. It is up to him to work to earn the votes of Benue people. With that, I am PDP. So I won't be sitting here telling you that we are going into an alliance with, uh, with uh, whatever. That is not for me to decide. It is for Benue people to decide who they want. And when they decide, we can't control them. Okay. Remember, the elections that are coming are going to be very technical. Okay. Um, um, and, and, and I make sense they'll be transparent. We know, we know that um, 2023 is supposed to be a different kind of election in Nigeria, maybe one which we have never witnessed, except maybe for the option A4 uh, from uh, uh, Humphrey Nwosu and so many other. Um, what will now happen to the candidate of the PDP since the people usually, usually, I'm not saying it's all the time, but usually votes for a party? Uh, how can we get them to vote for your candidates of the PDP in some elections and not vote for the president if that is what is going to happen? What are the chances of your candidate winning the 2023 governorship election in Ben West State, knowing that the presidential candidate is, uh, permit the word, misbehaving? Well, uh, you see, the Nigerians have become uh, very educated and wise. Even in the in the villages, people have got electoral education, and that is why you will see that in one unit, someone may win senatorial election, a presidential candidate may lose, and House of Reps. The three elections happen on the same day. There are three boxes. The boxes are different in, in color. Now the people know that here is the presidential box. Here is the, the senatorial, and this one is for House of Reps. The education has been done. Political parties are also sensitizing their people. So it, it to be uh, the people side. In 20, Atiku Abubakar defeated President Buhari in Benue State. Benue, I think Benue was the only state that uh, Atiku won, uh, defeated Buhari in North Central Nigeria. So. It, it, it is it's, it's possible. The same election, uh, some senators, PDP senators, of course, all of them, three of them won, but the other polling units, Buhari defeated Atiku. So the people know exactly what they want. And if they decide that uh, their votes for presidential elections will go to a, a, a candidate of another political party, they know the box, they, they, it's not the, same, the box is not the same. They know the box. The other one is black, the other one is green, the other one is, 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 is red, as the case may be. So the people know exactly what they want. And if there is anything Nigerians are well aware of, is the political, uh, I mean, the knowledge of voting. So that may not even be a problem. The people know exactly. In the same polling unit, if a is to be is to be rejected by the people in the same polling unit, he will be rejected. Governor Samuel will be elected, will be voted for in the same polling unit and House of Reps member, for instance, in Makudi here. Uh, 
uh, go to a polling unit, Atiku may lose the polling unit, Samuel Orotom may lose the same polling unit, uh, uh, Benjamin Mzondo, who is our House of Rest member for Makudi Kuma, uh, may win the same polling unit. So, and if Atiku is winning the polling unit, it will be the same thing. So, I, I think that will not be a problem. Okay. Uh, well, we wish uh, PDP and uh, your principal, Governor Tom, uh, luck. And we're hoping that the people between now and that time will be, like you said, educated enough to decipher between what is what, as it were, and be able to segregate <laughs> and choose the candidate that they want. So we thank you for being a part of this show today, and we wish you luck. Thank you. And before I go, let me quickly chip in. Arrogance will not take us anywhere. The leadership of, of PDP should come down from the high horse and relate with its party with their party members at all levels. We are not yet in power at the federal level. So what arrogance are we showing? Thank we you. have to beg Nigerians to be trusted. Thank you very much and God bless you. Thank you very much. Okay, we were talking with a uh, special advisor to the governor of Ben West State on media and publicity, Mr. Teve Akase. We'll take a short break and when we return, we'll be talking with our second guest, Dr. Chimwike, who is a financial expert. And we're looking at the Naira, the redesigning of the Naira. Stay with us.